The best kind of doors are the doors you have to explain. Welcome to Unhinged with the Door Dork, where door hardware nerds get together. We knock and we slam on different door fells. We learn, we laugh. Sometimes we even cry because the installs are that bad. Jason, I know you're going to be a crier today with some of these, but hopefully it's not too bad. But today we have a very special guest, Mr. Jason Grooms from Norton Rickson. Do you want to hop on and say hello and tell us this isn't your first role with us? and then let's do a little fun fact. Sure. Thanks for having me, guys. My name is Jason Grooms. I'm the product manager for the Door Controls Group in Monroe, North Carolina. And as you mentioned, I am getting nerdier by the day from a door hardware standpoint. I started out as a specification writer at Asa Abloy, and I spent some time on the opening studio professional services team where I shot my first video with Mia. And now I'm here in Monroe learning everything about our door controls group. Look at you now. So this is your third different role with Asa Abloy. Yes. Wow. That's awesome. Have you always been in the North Carolina area or... No, no. I actually moved down here from the Philadelphia area. I was writing specifications and was a part of the opening studio team in the Northeastern region. Oh, Philadelphia. Wait a second. Are you uh, an Eagles fan then? Well, that's actually my fun fact. So the last two places that I've lived are the two places that have teams in the Super Bowl. So I started out in Kansas City. That's where our specification apprentice program is based. And then I was in Philadelphia writing specifications and working for the opening studio team. So regardless of who win, I'm going to feel pretty good on Super Bowl Sunday. Either way, you win. That's awesome. But you have to have a favorite, right? Which one are you rooting for? That's tough. I'll say Philadelphia because I actually was there when they last won. That was when I had just moved there and I got pulled out of my house by my neighbors and forced to march down with the rest of the city to, to City Hall. So that was a that was a pretty great experience. My brother-in-law used to live in Philly. He was there when they won last as well. And he said it was nuts for days. It was like people were just going crazy. They were climbing up light poles, like things were getting thrown. Like it was, but they were happy. They were so happy. I've never heard of a city celebrating that much for uh, the love of a football game, but understandably so, right? Yeah, they're crazy um, about sports. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, you might've noticed that there might be a little theme going on this episode. Both me and I are wearing our door hardware nerds jersey, so we're rooting for them for the Super Bowl. So, Mia, why don't you hop on and say hello, and I believe you've got a football-related fun fact. Yeah, so hello, and welcome to this episode, and welcome back. Jason, we did an interview on professional services, and Jason is in that, so you can go back and watch that. And my fun fact is that in college, I lived with a Patriots cheerleader, so she's actually one of my besties. That was quite fun seeing the the behind-the-scenes of everything that goes in that those ladies do. It's impressive. And they all have full-time jobs in addition to cheerleading. So that's a tough sport. I knew a couple of cheerleaders in high school and college. And yeah, that's tough. Like the physicality behind what they do is in some ways surpasses the, the players on the field. Like just saying, just saying. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to root for the Eagles as well, because my other bestie from college is an Eagles fan. I don't have a horse in this race, but if I had to pick one, Eagles for me. Awesome. So Benji, yeah. fun fact. And who are you rooting? Fun fact, I loved football growing up. I was obsessed. My team was the 49ers. Well, still are. So I was a little hurt this last weekend when they got destroyed. That wasn't even a fun game to watch. But, you know, I grew up in like the Jerry Rice, Steve Young era. So I had some great role models to look up to. And I even played like a wide receiver in elementary school, if you can even count that as football. But Jerry Rice was my guy. That was my jersey. I would eat, sleep, drink, whatever in that that jersey for two straight years from fourth grade and fifth grade. I wore that jersey every single day to school and my mom would have to like peel it off me in the night to go wash it. And you know, like a jersey, I was always wearing like a shirt underneath it, right? So it wasn't like that dirty, but it got destroyed. I still have it in a box somewhere, but you can barely like see the, the logo on it. Rice is all like messed up on the back, but two years straight, every single day, that's all I wore. If you look at my family photos, like it's always, oh, there's Ben in his Jerry Rice jersey. And who I want to win the Super Bowl. I'm rooting for Philadelphia as well, partially because my brother-in-law used to live there and I don't really have any skin in the game for the Chiefs. Sorry. But I mean, I hope for a good game, yeah. good food, good commercials, good game. Let's get on with it. <laughs>
Okay, so for those who don't know how Unhinge works, I will share my screen. I'll show you some sort of door fell, installation fell, code violation, something like that. I'll share my screen and we'll react, we'll slam, we'll knock on it, and then throw any helpful tips so people can learn while they're having a little bit of fun. Then we'll give it a knocking score. So Jason, one is being not too knocking bad. So it's like, hey, yeah, I understand why we posted that on here, but it's like not a code violation or anything like that. But 10 being like, like, hey, this is a doozy. Let's get this taken care of. Let's call the AHJ. Let's get the fire marshal involved. Something pretty scary is happening here. So how does that sound? You guys ready? Sounds good. Okay. Oh my goodness. Valentine's Day is coming up and you know, <laughs> yeah, they share a little love with all the door hardware nerds. Wow. I've never seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> those are like extension through bolts. Yeah. <laughs> are those even through bolts? Is that something that came from the factory? Oh, I highly doubt that came from the factory. I think that was custom made right there. Call that a G job, a government job. <laughs> <laughs> That reminds me of the extension rides for our magnetic holders. Yeah. That looks like a five or six inch extension there. It's sizable. That's Do you a... have a video of the door opening? I'd be willing to bet that, that thing moved. Oh, I'm sure. I'm, you can see it beveling a little bit. Like it's already, I feel like that's going to open up maybe 20 times before something's going to give, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised we don't. Well, I'm sure in time, we'll also see some nice trail across the door frame at the top because something will have kicked out, yeah, especially the, that nice soft wood on top. The fulcrum lever is completely off here, right? Like it's <laughs> going to be very unbalanced. Luckily, it is an exit and hopefully they're not using this door very often. But do you guys see anything else that might be kind of concerning? That it's a pull? So, kind of hard not to focus on the obvious there. Yeah, that's the big doozy right there. And if if you look at this picture like oh that looks fine and then you see the shadow I'm like wait a second why is there a shadow there and then you go a little bit deeper and you understand why oh there's a deadbolt so on i here. wonder i wonder if yes yeah, 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 yeah. i wonder is that a cased open frame like did they install the door on the wrong end of the frame it almost looks like they did like i mean they installed it like they thought they'd be putting a parallel arm closer on it and it would be swinging outside and i guess at the last minute or whatever they decided no this is going to be an in swinger inset into the frame yeah you would think with that type of arm setup that they would have had the door hung the other way plus it is an exit and we don't know what the occupancy is so it doesn't necessarily need out swinging egress and if it did right. it would need an exit device on there as well yeah that's actually a good insight i never thought about that maybe they just installed the door on the wrong side did you take this picture no no this was submitted in okay. from mr stan i mean those look like screw access points for the window set. So that should be on the inside of the window. Yep. So, one, But who knows, it could go in a lot of different ways. But yes, the deadbolt, Mia, good eye. That's definitely a no-no for an exit path of egress. Okay, pretty crazy, right? Also, what's this hook <laughs> thing back here? <laughs> I, was, I was noticing that. It's uh, like, a little concerning. I'd like to see the rest of the decor because it's clearly not functional. There's no track. So that was a decor choice. Yeah, I feel like... Maybe it's one of those hanging feet that they haven't hung up yet. Yeah. Stan, Stan, come back to us. We need more information. We need a video. We want to see this door operate. <laughs> and we need to know who was the interior designer on this. <laughs> okay. Any last remarks? Any other comments before we give it a knocking score? Done for me. Happy Valentine's <laughs> Day. All right. Jason, if you gave it a knocking score, one through 10, what would it be? Without seeing video, I'm going to have to give it an eight. I don't see how this door is going to function for very long if it does. Just in your mind, you're picturing it opening up and closing, and it just doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> Yeah, I was in the like seven range, but it could go higher depending on the occupancy. I mean, we have a deadbolt on an egress door, the closer is going to fall off and it's in swinging and we don't know if that's a problem or not. Yeah, like always, there's a lot of questions to the door, but I would yeah. say blame code violations are there. They might be able to get away with it, having the door unlocked with the deadbolt. If they had a sign on there saying that door must be remained unlocked and it's a retail occupancy, they might be able to get away with that deadbolt. If I was inspecting this, I would definitely not pass this by any means on a couple different levels. So I'm up there with you, probably a, like an eight or nine. This is pretty knocking bad. And it does look like they're using this exit because there are footsteps out there. Okay. Are you ready for the next one? Should we dive in? It can only get worse from here, right? If you want to be featured on a future episode of Unhinged, 
or if you have a photo to submit, leave a comment down below, or you can email me at mia at doorhardwarenerds.com.